The 3060 is clearly the superior card because it's got more memory and higher memory bandwidth. However, if you don't have as much money to throw around, can you still go with the 3050? And is it still an excellent pick? And how far does it even lag behind the competition? You really wanna know? Well then keep watching. On paper, the price difference between the 3050 and 3060 is about 28%. The 3050 is trimmed down in a number of ways but not at that same 28% across the board. For example, there's around 43% difference in core count, which does apply to the CUDA, ray tracing, and tensor cores. This disparity is consistent across all three types of cores, and the modest decrease in boost clock speed doesn't significantly impact performance because you can easily improve the RTX 3050's performance with automatic GPU overclocking. However, the RAM is reduced, which does have an influence. The fact that the RTX 3050 has eight gigs of GDDR6 RAM is not the issue. That is more enough for today's games, especially when considering the 1080p market that the 3050 is designated to serve. The memory bus is really the source of the issue here. The 3050 has approximately 38% less memory bandwidth than the 3060 because it has fewer memory chips and a much narrower memory bus. Whenever you first load into a game, you could see some stuttering issues due to limited bandwidth. And when playing big open world games with high definition textures everywhere, the difference of four gigabytes does make a difference. However, given that both cards do aim for 1080p output, neither requires large textures, which means that the RAM gap is less of an issue. Thankfully, the RTX 3050 does offer significant reductions in power consumption. And because there is a lot fewer cores that run on a somewhat slower speed, the power drain is reduced to 90 watts. This is the first GPU in the 3000 series to actually consume less than 100 watts, which is wonderful news for those who are building computers on a budget and really don't want to shell out for a huge power supply simply to run their graphics card. The RTX 3050 can also be purchased with a lot cheaper price with $250, while the RTX 3060 is coming in at $330. Gaming performance. A 28% difference in price should translate into a better performance, yet the RTX 3050 performs marginally better than its peers. Now, ignoring the very wide disparity in Fortnite games, there is approximately a 23% difference between the two cards whenever compared to one another across the board. The Verizon 9 5950X and 32 gigabytes of RAM were used in various tests conducted by Digitrends, which ensures that the results are purely focused on GPU performance. Their overall performance disparities amount to about 23%, a static perfectly mirrored in the results of their 3D time spy test. The cards in some games, such as Assassin's Creed Valhalla, are only about 15% different from one another. There was a striking difference shown in the 3060 because it was in fact 67% faster than the 3050 when playing Fortnite, which was the game where they observed the highest performance differential. Because this game is part of a live service, we ended up removing it from our overall average. Performance can fluctuate as new features and maps are added, which does explain why they're seeing higher results on the RTX 3060 than normal. The RTX 3050 could produce minimum frame rates in Battlefield 5 whenever we're talking about high-end gameplay and sometimes it would even hit single digits. This manifested itself in the form of stuttering during the initial few runs of the game, while the assets were even loaded onto the memory. Now, this isn't really a problem that's unique to the 3050, but the fact that it has a limited bandwidth does make it worse. Comparative performance is right where it should be. The RTX 3050 gives a performance marginally more than its price would predict it would offer. However, the RTX 3060 remains a superior choice in this case. The RTX 3060 can maintain a steady frame rate of 60 FPS at 1080p gaming with highest graphics settings whenever playing AAA titles like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. The 3050, on the other hand, is unable to do so. The 3050 is not a terrible choice by any means, particularly if you're willing to reduce the quality of the graphics in exchange for saving money. However, the 3060 does provide a more realistic performance, barely exceeding 60 frames per second whenever they're running the notoriously demanding Cyberpunk 2077. Even while the RTX 3050 is a good option for what it is, 
the 3060 is going to provide you with a greater return on your investment. Resizable Bar Features Resizable Bar is a feature that can be found on desktop computers and laptops, which are powered by NVIDIA's GeForce 3000 series graphics cards. The feature was introduced alongside the launch of the GeForce RTX 3060 and is now compatible with all of NVIDIA's 3000 series GPUs, both desktop and mobile, mind you. The measuring of quote-unquote resizable bar is a feature of the PCI Express interface which NVIDIA chooses to implement on its most recent graphics cards. This feature enables the processor and the graphics card to be able to share access to resources, resulting in a much faster data transfer. NVIDIA chose to implement this feature because it was important to the company. NVIDIA's design is not dissimilar to what its competitor AMD has previously shown whenever it comes to their smart access memory, which enables its Ryzen processors to interfere with Radeon GPUs in a manner that is both improved and a lot more efficient. Before the implementation of the resize bar feature, a CPU could only access a fraction of the graphics memory, also known as VRAM. This has traditionally been capped at about 256 megabits, the max size the 32-bit operating system can support. This 256 megabit section of video memory is used whenever a CPU wants to connect with the GPU. The commands are then saved in this section. Because commands have to be queued in sequential order, this solution creates a bottleneck in the system. Instructions can't be in parallel, and what this does is the bottleneck in communication between the CPU and GPU is then addressed by the resizable bar, which gives the processor the ability to negotiate the size of the bar, which is then displayed upon the GPU. In practice, this does grant the CPU unrestricted access to the VRAM on a chip, and by granting the processor access to the memory on the GPU, it's going to be able to transmit numerous instructions to the GPU in parallel, which will cause the process to move much more quickly. Both of these graphics cards do show off their incredible capabilities with resizable bar, and if you're free to choose any of the cards if the resizable bar is the most important consideration. The 3060 finds itself in an ideal position for this. Even though it falls short of the 3060 Ti in terms of graphics performance, it is a 1080p graphics card that is designed with the highest graphics preset in mind. The 3050 isn't a terrible card, but it doesn't quite reach the same level of performance in which the 3060 does. Even now, it's got trouble playing AAA games at 1080p, and in a few years from now, those problems will be even more obvious. So there you have it. That's the 3050 versus the 3060 with resizable bars. Thanks for watching today's video, and of course, if you enjoyed it, then please give us a big thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content just like this. And don't forget to ding that notification bell so that way you don't miss out on any more content updates from us. Until next time, folks, stay safe and stay informed.